Well, good morning again. Um, morning. We're going to read again from the devotional book by Tim Chester called uh, The Glory of the Cross. You can buy this, by the way, from the Good Book Company. Um, Jen's going to read from John 19. Thanks, Jen. Okay. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. <clears throat> From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Thanks, Jen. From the devotional guide. In 2006, England played in the finals of the World Cup. Scotland had failed to qualify, so who did the Scots support? According to the t-shirts being sold in Glasgow, Glasgow, it was ABE, anyone but England. It's an example of the good-natured banter, beloved of sports fans the world over. Humanity's allegiance is much more significant. This is a life-death issue. And who does our humanity support? A, B, J, anyone but Jesus. It's worth standing back to recognise what takes place in these verses. John labours the point. Three times Pilate says, I find no basis for a charge against him. There's no doubt about it. Pilate thinks Jesus is innocent. Yet for the sake of the political expediency, Pilate handed him over to the chief priests to be crucified. He condemns a man he knows to be innocent. That sounds outrageous, but I wonder, are there times when you find it expedient to ignore the claims of Jesus? Actually, it gets worse. Not only does Pilate condemn an innocent man, he also pardons a guilty man. The custom was for the Romans to release a Jewish prisoner to mark the Passover festival. Pilate offers them a choice between Jesus, an obviously innocent man, and Barabbas, an obviously guilty man. They choose Barabbas, anyone but Jesus. For John, this is another picture of the meaning of the cross. The innocent dies, that the guilty may go free. We are all Barabbas. Barabbas, John tells us, had taken part in an uprising. And we are part of humanity's uprising against God. Yet it's Jesus who bears our guilt so we can walk free. What about the religious leaders? At first glance, their words might surprise us. After all, the Jews hated Caesar. He represented the empire which had subjugated their nation and occupied their land. And not just their land, this was God's land. It was an act of sacrilege. But when Pilate says, here is your king, all of a sudden they care deeply about Caesar's honour. We have no king but Caesar, they cry. They not only reject Jesus, they reject all messianic claims. When Pilate orders an ironic notice of the kingship of Jesus to be placed over his cross, the religious leaders protest, anyone but Jesus. The chances are you've told someone about Jesus and been rebuffed or mocked. It's easier to take it personally. It's tempting to wonder if you did something wrong. But humanity has a deep-seated bias against God. The trial of Jesus is humanity's verdict, writ large. When we get the chance, we murder our Creator. 
and so still today people support A, B, J. As Christians, our response must be to persevere and pray. The story is not over yet. And there's a brief meditation from Thomas Kelly from the 1800s. Sinners in derision crowned him, mocking thus the Saviour's claim. Saints and angels crowded round him, own his title, praise his name. Crown him, crown him, spread abroad the victor's fame. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.